Hi guys, it's Rapid here. Welcome to the first of a mini series all about energy. Today I'm going to introduce some key concepts and also tell you how these tutorials are going to work in this mini series. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I created a straw poll so that you guys could decide which energy API I would be using for this tutorial. The results were quite close, to be fair. Um, it was 54% Forge Energy and 46% CUFH. Now, I also had a lot of questions regarding whether I was going to use Tesla, which I was debating about before I created the poll. Now, after a lot of planning and consideration, I've decided the schedule of these videos, and I'm going to cover all three energy APIs. So, each energy API will have three different tutorials for each different kind of energy storage, which I'll discuss later. So, here are the tutorials I'm going to be doing. So for Forge Energy, we're going to have the Energy Storage Tutorial, which is on the Energy Cell. We're going to have the Energy Consumer Tutorial, which is on the Block Breaker. The Energy Producer Tutorial, which is on the Furnace Generator. The Energy Item Tutorial, which is the Energy Cell as an Item. That's basically like what, is, what it says in the tin, really. The COFH Redstone Flux will have Energy Storage, which is Network Controller. Uh, energy receiver, network transmitter, energy provider, which is a network receiver, and its energy item is an acceleration wand. With Tesla, there's going to be an installation video telling you how to install it. There's going to be an energy storage on, which is going to create the energy buffer, the energy consumer, which is going to create the block placer, the energy producer, which is the water mill, and the energy item, which is going to be a drill. So, for all of this to work, we need to understand three main concepts and they are the energy storage slash holder, the energy consumer slash receiver and the energy producer slash provider. The reason energy is split off into these three types is to improve the compatibility and the functionality of storing energy. It allows mods to work better together and you can also read up about all three of these on my CJ Core wiki which there'll be a link to in the description. So, let's start off on energy storage. Anything which is in an energy storage cannot have its energy accessed by a neighbouring block. Let's say a generator which is an energy producer was placed next to a block which is an energy storage. The generator will not give any energy to the energy storage. It will be handled internally by the energy storage. This is the same when an energy consumer is placed next to it it will not receive any energy, so anything which isn't energy storage must handle all the energy transmitting internally. And using my API, this is super simple. So that's how an energy storage will work, it will only handle it transmitting and receiving internally. Now onto the energy producer. Anything which is an energy producer cannot have energy given to it as it already produces energy. Energy can only be taken from an energy producer, and that's typically only done in an energy storage. An energy producer will, will most likely consume something to create this energy, which should be handled inside your tile entity. If your block's passive generator, then that's not necessary. One of the most difficult concepts to grasp is that which gives energy to the other. Does the energy producer give energy to the energy consumer, or is it the other way around? The answer is simple. The energy producer should always give energy to neighbouring blocks. This can be done with the energy storage using energyutils.give energy all faces, which I will discuss in the first tutorial. How to use this, and this is in the API. It's recommended that you balance how much energy is produced for how much your input is consumed. And now on to the energy consumer. Like the energy producer, it's you can't take energy from it because it already consumes the energy. It should be done internally and as previously mentioned the energy consumer will not take energy from neighbouring blocks. This will be done either by the energy producer or the energy storage. So that's the key concepts we need to understand. I hope that makes sense to you and if it doesn't you can just read it up on the wiki because that was taken directly from the wiki. Now let's talk about what we're actually going to make in these tutorials. So first of all we had the energy cell. The energy cell, all the energy cell does is store energy and accepts and transmits energy to every side. It has multiple tiers like a machine and can charge and discharge items. 
In the future, it will probably have the ability to have configurable sides, but that is not implemented yet. The block breaker, which we're going to implement, uses 20RF for every block that's broken and 5RF passively. That's how that's going to work. The furnace generator will generate 40RF a tick for every furnace fuel that is placed in. The network controller will hold all the energy inside of a network exactly like an energy cell, other than it will only get energy from transmitters and receivers, uh, which is connected to that specific network. And the network transmitter will simply pump energy inside the network controller at a rate specified by getting energy from neighbouring blocks. The network receiver will get energy from the network controller and give it out to all neighbouring blocks. The energy buffer is a bit more advanced. It actually has two energy storages, one which will transmit energy to the neighbouring blocks, the other which will receive. When the receive buffer is full, the transmit buffer will start to fill up. When the receive buffer is at a per percentage specified, which is typically 75%, the transmit buffer will receive a set amount of energy per tick and will only output on one specific side. This is used to keep essential machines running. So basically, it's backup generator. It uses the minimum amount of power it needs to run everything. So when your energy drops below 75%, it will only keep the minimum amount of machines running. And also it will be able to emit redstone when below a certain level. The block placer will simply use 5RF to place a block from its inventory. You can choose a direction by placing different blocks into its six different inventory slots, one for each face. And finally, the water mill. When flowing water is above or to the side, it will output 50RF per side with running water per like stage or height of the water. If the water is not flowing, that side will be ignored. Water must flow only in one direction for the side to be valid and all energy will be generated passively. So, that's it. That's all I will cover. I hope that will be useful. Obviously, you've got the energy items, which they're quite simple to understand. It's sort of in the name. Hopefully, you'll find this useful and helpful, and also it'd be nice to see all my ideas come to life. I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out.